Dean, in trying to figure out what reality is, here are some of the options. Some would say it's only the material world. Others would add a mental world for number two. Some would talk about a platonic world of forms and numbers that exist someplace. And others would have a spirit world that God inhabits and maybe other kinds of spirit creatures. So there's all these kinds of worlds floating around. From your perspective, believing deeply in the reality of extrasensory perception and all that that may mean, how do you reflect on all these different worlds? Uh, actually, it's not, it would make the, the problem of four worlds much, much worse. <laughs> because one of the things that ESP implies is something like a shared experience. It's a, there's an intersubjective quality. Uh, the, all of the phenomena suggest that what I usually think of as only locked inside my head, the subjective, somehow blurs out into the world and, and it affects it or is affected by it. So there's the objective subjective mixing. So rather than just four worlds, we have blurring between those four, and we have probably completely new ones that are made up out of this new intersubjective quality. How could that conceivably work? I mean, let's just stay in our physical world for the time being, and let's assume that the others don't exist, that it's just the physical world, and we have extrasensory perception, if it exists, and we're assuming it does, exists in our physical world. What, what is this intersubjectivity? Something exists that it... If you and I are the only two human beings around uh, at all, that you exist, I exist, and then there's something that exists between us? There's a shared existence. So uh, just to think of it in terms of telepathy, for example. I, I usually think of my thoughts are inside my head, they're private, they're isolated here. But if telepathy is real, then your thoughts can intrude on mine and vice versa. So what are my thoughts? See, my thoughts don't make any sense by themselves anymore. They, they involve a sharing between your thoughts and my thoughts. And so the, this concept of a, a isolated physical world made at, up out of particles becomes a little bit blurry because now there's subjective stuff inside my head which is affecting your head, which looks like an independent particle. It's like a separate thing, but apparently it's not so separate. But that's still in my head and it's still in your head, even though some of me may be generated by some of you, it's still part of me. Are we talking about the, a literal development of something, something th that's else. real, something else? Yeah. So now we have to imagine the possibility of an imaginal world, a world which actually does have a separate reality or a new reality as a result of something like collective mind. And that collective mind sort of actualizes or, or brings into existence something new, not just imaginary new, I mean, we can imagine together something new, mm -hmm. but, but, but really uh, 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 conjures up something that's literally new? Maybe. Let, let's assume that something like psychokinesis works, okay. and my intentions can be expressed out into the world. And now let's assume that I'm a physicist and I write a really cool equation that predicts something that no one has seen before. But a lot of effort is going to go into finding that strange particle, like a positron. So Dirac comes up with this equation that shows a positive and negative right. uh, right. solution. And he says, you know, you know, normally the electrons are negative, but this shows there's a positive solution. So somebody goes looking for it, and guess what? They find it. Even though before anybody looked for it, the concept of antimatter was considered the most laughable thing you can think of. It was impossible. So is this a case where very strong expectation with a lot of money behind it, kind of pushing all this expectation, theoretical grounding, did that cause the positron to arise simply because the mathematics were right? Well, I'm not gonna push this too far because you know, it, it, if you push it too far, we end up in a solipsistic universe. And that I'm, everything is, emerges from my own mind. That's right. Me. So I'm not pushing it that far, but I am saying that the, the idea of solipsism or even just idealism in general may have something to it. Well, a lot of things are floating around here. First of all, in the positron, the uh, conventional wisdom would be that it was kind of there all along. It's just, or, or the opportunity for it was there. And we just had to look for it. We had to have accelerators with enough energy so we can reach those energy levels in which that could emerge. That's true. That's the conventional wisdom. <laughs> but the conventional wisdom doesn't include the possibility of ESP. Right. So when we add in a new element, and suddenly the, the conventional wisdom can be reframed, in essence, 
Uh, and actually, it's not just a positron, but there are many things about the, the standard model in particle physics uh, and mathematics in general that seem to be unreasonably good at describing the physical world. So why is it that Newton's laws can describe the motion of the planets to one part in a million, and quantum mechanics add it to, adds another factor of a million in terms of accuracy? That's, that seems unreasonable. That is just a matter of symbols which are strung together in a certain way will be such good descriptors of the actual world. So some mathematicians, especially mathematical physicists, when they start thinking about this and not simply turning the crank to get the result, postulate that there's something like a platonic world. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, that, that's right. And that, and that gives uh, some uh, basis for the existence of this other realm of existence that, that you're uh, 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 d discovering what's there as opposed to inventing something new. Right. And it's all, always existing there. Right. So that's the argument for the platonic world. But we don't know how much there is in the platonic world. You know, we, we sometimes say, well, it's, it's a couple of geometric forms and that's basically it. Oh, really? In Plato's day, it would have also had Zeus. It would have all of the, the, the gods, the whole panoply of gods, and many, many other things, perhaps. Well, some people would have you know, all the numbers and anything in mathematics, plus all the so-called universals, the, you know, the, the, uh, the, the essence of, uh, of redness, and not any red object, but the concept of red, redness, mm -hmm. and all the different uh, universal kinds of qualities would, would be there. But you're, you're, you're making an additional statement that uh, the Greek gods... Uh, could have been conjured up because the people in ancient Greece had this shared opinion, and and because they had this shared opinion, then something came into existence. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there's certainly you, in, you in say the, that matter of fact. That's a rather striking statement. Well, remember that uh, almost everything I say is going to be speculative. We don't yeah, really but, know. But, yeah, but, we also don't know the limits of a platonic world, imagining that there was one. We really don't know the limits. Uh, is the concept of red? Different than the concept of Zeus? Well, there is redness. Well, how come there's not Zeusness? Well, maybe there is Zeusness. And we, we, we haven't gone looking for him, and the same reason that before Dirac, we didn't go looking for the positron. So what I'm suggesting then is that if the, the, the part of ESP, that, that realm, is true, and our intentions affect the world, mm -hmm. then our collective intentions could change the world in such a way to, as, to make things arise or maybe just to make us aware of things that we otherwise would not see. So th those are two different aspects, so that's, that's interesting. One is, is, is making us aware of something that was already there that we didn't see, but right. now our eyes are open to something new through this, this power of ESP or this effect on us, mm -hmm. this being plugged into the, to the, to the, to the fabric of reality. Uh, that is one level of... Uh, Incredulity. A, you know, a, a huge level of incredulity is where you can actually use this to conjure up things that never existed before. Well, think of uh, the way that Carl Jung addressed the idea of UFOs. He saw it as a projection of the collective unconscious. Mm. That when, when society, for some reason, becomes very agitated, that if there is a collective mind, that it could, it could literally project in the same way that individual psychology can project on the world, but this is a different kind of projection. It's projecting it into some sort of mental space that we can perceive. In this case, something new was created. A whole bunch of people saw something. Then you can think of, of instances like the, uh, the sightings of the miracle of Fatima, where it, when, when the original sightings were occurring, tens of thousands of people saw something bizarre in the sky. Mm. We don't know what that was. I mean, people will interpret it religiously and, and by other means. Uh, that kind of suggests that, there, that a, a large-scale collective agreement that something should be so will be seen by a lot of people or perceived in some way. Is that the same kind of reality as the hardness of this table? I don't think so. But is it real? Well, seen by a lot of people at the same time, it sounds kind of real. So if we, if we ask each other, you know, what things are, are real, we, in addition to the physical world, um, you're, you posit that there are, because of this collective consciousness, because of the, this intersubjectivity that occurs between minds, that that, that is an opening to, to either the awareness or the creation of all sorts of stuff 
that uh, enhances the meaning of reality. We would hope that science is, that, that the real power of science is to test whether that is true or not. But if it is true, then science is in very serious trouble because there are both epistemological and ontological reasons to see that science may be far more manipulable or flexible in, in terms of showing us what reality is than we may have previously guessed.